Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and the city in which we live. Guide us this afternoon as we make our decisions. In Christ's name. Amen. Amen. This is the August 13th regular meeting of the, or 2019 regular meeting of the Newman City Council. You have the minutes uh, from the meeting, regular meeting of July the 16th before you. I'll entertain a motion. We adopt those minutes. Second. Second. Motion second. We adopt those minutes as presented. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. You also have the minutes from the special call meeting July 25th, 2019. I'll adopt the motion. So moved. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Thank you. Motion carried. You also have the minutes from the uh, special call meeting on August 16th. Oh, I mean August 6th, 2019. Entertain a motion. Second. second. Motion second. We adopt. Presented. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. This afternoon we have appointments to boards and commissions. We have four to the Cultural Arts Commission. The first is Craig Ruby. I would like to reappoint Mr. Ruby. Second. Motion second. We reappoint Mr. Ruby to the Cultural Arts Commission. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. The next, Mr. DeBose. Uh, I'd ask that be moved to the next meeting, please. Okay, thank you. And then the next, uh, Ms. Jenkins. Ms. Parks has indicated that she will not um, resume um, for the next three years, so I'd like us to send her a letter. Thank you, and I will look for a new person. Okay, thank you. Uh, new appointment, Mr. Shell, to the Cultural Arts. Yes, I want to nominate Mag uh, Margaret <coughs> Millen. Second. Motion to second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. The next is uh, keeping in beautiful uh, new appointment, Mr. DeBose. I'm waiting on a potential person to get back to me on the next meeting. All right. The next is Board of Zoning Appeals. I'd like to reappoint Mr. Smith. Second. Motion to second. We reappoint Mr. Smith to BZA. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. The next uh, is Mr. Correcto uh, to the BZA. I'd like to reappoint Mr. Uh, Frank Flournoy. Second. Right. Motion is second. We reappoint Mr. Flournoy to the BZA. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. The next uh, is the Downtown Development Authority. Mr. Jim Thomason. I'd like to reappoint him, please. Second. second. Motion is second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. And Ms. Jenkins, uh, Development Authority. Um, I'd like to reappoint Mr. Braylon Ward. Second. Right. Motion is second. We will reappoint Mr. Ward to the Downtown Development Authority. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, this uh, also today under boards and commissions, uh, we have the annual report from the uh, Noonan Convention Center Authority. Who is going to? Ms. Moore, how are you today? Wonderful. How are you? Good, good. Good to see you. Thank you for letting us be here today. I wanted to say that we have Parks Avery, our board chairman, with us, and I also have Peyton Shelnut. She's our sales and events manager with us. This is going to be pretty fast. Um, Beginning January 1st of this year, we took alcohol services in-house. Um, the alcohol license is now in our name. We do offer full bar services. We did add a part-time uh, beverage manager, that being Francis Yarborough. Done a great job for us so far. All of our bartenders are uh, trained in safe serve, uh, and we also purchased additional board liability and officer insurance, as well as additional general liability insurance as it regards to alcohol. Uh, and just to mention that we do have staff, Peyton being one and Stuart Johnson another, it's, uh, staff in training to have a succession plan in case I get hit by a bus or retire. Um, I wanted to say we have an outdoor wedding venue project going on. Um, K.A. Oldham is the architect on that project. We did do a bid which was awarded to Headley Construction. Uh, the project that we selected actually complements the venue very nicely and, and it will look when it's completed as if it's been a part of the project the entire time. The project cost came in at $399,851 after we value engineered some things and uh, this is being paid for out of our capital reserve fund and after paying for these items for this building we will still maintain um, a minimum balance in case we have to replace carpet or air conditioners, etc. 
We do intend for the venue, even though we our main focus for it is to be an outdoor wedding venue, we do intend to use it multi-purpose. I could see a comedian down there, maybe a smaller concert, etc. The other thing this project does is up at our pavilion, it extends that patio so that we can have receptions for up to 200 people. Um, we're hoping for a completion date of September. Our marketing is already underway for this venue. Uh, we have uh, already got two weddings booked and are actively uh, looking to book more. This is an architect rendering of what the facility will look like. It mirrors our pavilion building very nicely, and as I said, it will uh, seem as if it's been there the entire time. This is the area of the existing pavilion, as you can see that the concrete that we're expanding there for that reception area for up to 200. This is standing at the pavilion looking down to the tree line where this building will be. They're building in steps to get down to that area. And this is the base for that actual building that's going on. We also, um, as part of the project, uh, coming in off of the loading dock area uh, and our parking area are extending that sidewalk from that area because there will be a handicapped parking spot back at the loading dock area to access this venue. Um, just to give you a heads up on some challenges that we face um, within our organization, parking is one. When we have a full house and the Performing Arts Center has a full house, we definitely don't have enough parking, either one of us. Uh, the second challenge we have is breakout rooms. We do conferences. We've done three conferences so far this year, and that's what we want to do because it puts hotel, motel tax back into the coffers and heads in beds and brings people in to spend money in the community. But our challenge always comes in in breakout space. We just are not large enough to be able to have a general session room, a lunch room, and breakout rooms for those conferences. But we are doing the conferences that we can do. And also hotel, you know, long-term vision down the road, we'd love to have a hotel because that certainly brings the meeting planners, that's high on their checklist, that the meeting space be connected to a hotel. And that's short and sweet. I'm open to any questions that you may have. The uh, addition of a hotel could also solve your breakout room problem. Yes. Breakout rooms in the hotel. It could. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions, comments? Thank you for your report. Thank, Thank you for you. your service, Mr. Avery, and other members of the convention. I thought you appreciate it. Okay. Uh, anyone else have anything else for her today? All right. I'll move on. Mr. Phillips, do you have anything? No, sir, Mr. Mayor. I don't have anything. Under new business, the first item up is uh, the 2018. Uh, presentation by author, by auditors. Uh, Mr. Neal is here today. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. Thank you for the uh, opportunity to present the uh, 2018 audit. Um, we completed, uh, let's say, uh, later in the spring. It was in towards the end of uh, June. The report was submitted to the uh, to the state of Georgia. Uh, before I start talking about the 18 audit, I, I, one sort of piece of unfinished business related to the 17 audit is during fiscal year 2018, uh, the uh, GFOA uh, awarded the city uh, the Certificate of Achievement in Excellence in Financial Reporting. And uh, this, is, this report, uh, award is, is not an easy thing to get. There's a lot of hoops you have to jump through, a criteria that you have to meet. I don't know how many consecutive years the city has, um, has been uh, awarded this certificate, but it's been as long as I can remember. So it's something that the uh, finance uh, staff in the city should be proud of because it's not an easy thing to accomplish. Uh, as far as the uh, audit for 2018, we always remind that the financial statements are the responsibility of management. Our, our responsibility as auditors is to express an opinion on the financial statements based on the audit. And we were able to issue an unmodified opinion for 2018. That's the highest level that you can achieve there. So that's, that's good, really good news. Uh, I'm going to talk, take a couple minutes and just talk about the, uh, the major funds for the city. Uh, as of the end of December of 2018, the uh, uh, general fund had assets totaling $26,655,000. Uh, as far as liabilities go, the general fund had liabilities of $714,000 and it also contained fund balance of 
$940,000, of which uh, just over $24,800,000 was unassigned uh, a fund balance. Uh, so good, strong fund balance there for the city. Uh, for 2018, the fund balance increased $1,870,000. So if you want to look at what your fund balance has done over looking back as far as uh, 2011, you can see pretty much a, a, a steady climb there. 2015, 16, 17, there are a lot of things going on. It was pretty flat, but it's jumped again in 2018. But it's a, uh, it's a strong uh, fund balance. Uh, think of it in terms of your, um, of your annual expenditures. I think there were just over $25 million worth of expenditures in 2018. So you've got almost a year's worth of um, of expenses that are uh, have accumulated in that uh, in that unassigned fund balance, and that, that's real strong. Uh, general fund revenues for 2018, you can see, were 26 million 820 thousand dollars. 48 percent of that uh, it was derived from uh, property taxes, which was 21 percent, and local option sales tax, which was uh, 27 percent. On the expenditure side for the general fund, you can see that public safety uh, was about was 51% of the total of $25,083,000 for the year. Uh, for your uh, SPLOS funds that are still active, you had two of them. Your 2007 SPLOS, uh, you had expenditures of $606,000 in that uh, fund uh, in 2018. And as of the end of the year, you had you still had a fund balance in for 2007 there of $1,009,000 uh, for the uh, 2013 SPLOS, you had revenues of $6,142,000, expended uh, $4,561,000, and you had fund balance uh, for the 2013 SPLOS at the end of the year of $6,135,000. And your other uh, major fund is your uh, impact fees that you took in $935,000 for the year, spent uh, a little over $2.7 million. Uh, but you still had a fund balance at the, uh, at the end of the year of $638,000. So overall, just real good uh, financial numbers across the board there. Uh, hotel Motel uh, is another one I usually uh, talk about. Uh, revenues of $721,000, expenditures of $720,000, and it had a fund balance of $120,000 uh, at, the, uh, at the end of the year. Uh, as far as the findings go, there were no uh, audit findings reported in connection with the 2018 um, uh, audit. What that means is we had no uh, uh, or detected no significant weaknesses or, mat or material weaknesses in the internal control structure. So the report was clean from that standpoint. And as I mentioned earlier, the 2018 report has already been submitted to the state and state has already accepted it. Uh, so that's another box that uh, can go ahead and be checked off. If, as always, we want to express our appreciation to the, to the staff uh, in the finance office. They do a good job. They, they make our job uh, uh, very smooth, and uh, we're, we're really appreciative of that. They've got a really good operation going, and have uh, Katrina and her staff have, have, uh, do, a, do an excellent job. And uh, it was, I can rate it, uh, the city of Noonan up probably in the very top tier of the, uh, the uh, city audits uh, that we uh, do for, uh, in the state of Georgia. And she, they've been that way for a while. And at that point, I'll be quiet. And if anybody has any questions, I'll be glad to cover, cover you, those. You can keep saying those great things. That's, that's a, <laughs> they, uh, sometimes I come before the great, and, and I don't have as many uh, great things. I won't take advantage of it. Noonan is always a, um, the city of Noonan is always a, uh, a good trip for me for that reason. So I'll ask the question, how many cities do you do as compared Right now, I want to say that number fluctuates. It's like membership at a Baptist church. They just sort of come and go. I want to say probably uh, maybe 10 to 12 right now. And we do probably five or six counties, a couple regional commissions, and then uh, dozens of these authorities. Uh, we, we do those also. So we rank real high in out of those... Oh, oh y'all yeah. y'all are in that in that uh, that that top five percent of the. You could take them all and put them in a bucket. Right. That one bucket, and, and you'd be in the top five percent of uh, all of those. Any other questions or comments, mm -hmm. Mr. Neal? We thank you again. Thank you. We appreciate, appreciate that. that. Mm -hmm. The next item on the agenda is the ordinance to set the millage rate for 2019. Uh, Mr. Phillips, do you have this today? Absolutely, Mr. Mayor. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce the ordinance uh, to adopt the millage rate for uh, 2019 property taxes. Uh, the ordinance you have in front of you 
will adopt the rollback rate. Uh, the rollback rate for 2019 will be a slight reduction from 2018 for to the effective rate in this ordinance of 3.989 mills. Since we are uh, recommending the ordinance for taking the rollback rate, there's no need to advertise for any additional public hearings if we're not having a quote-unquote tax increase. So have the ordinance in front of you, Mayor and Council, for consideration. Entertain a motion. So, second. second. Motion is second. We adopt the ordinance to set the millage rate for 2019 at what you said was 3.989. That is correct, Mr. Mayor. All right. Any discussion, questions? You're saying that this doesn't have any effect on property tax? Is that what you said? Uh, that, that's probably not an accurate statement uh, from the standpoint that I can't guarantee if a property had been reassessed. Yes. But if a property has not been reassessed, then the application of this millage rate would re result in a so slightly smaller tax obligation due to the city of Newman. Any other questions? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. The next is consider agreement with LifeWorks uh, by Morine uh, Sheppel to improve employee assistant program in the city of um, city of Noonan. You have this before you. This is a change from uh, the provider that we've had in the past. That's correct. And so, if there are any questions of staff, uh, be fine. If none, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Motion a second. We adopt the agreement as presented and recommended by staff. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. The next is a report for the Noonan Coweta Historical Society presentation regarding operations of the Hollis McRitchie Museum. Good Hello. I'm, I'm Gary Weldon. My office is at 38 Spring Street, and I enjoy being a resident of Noonan. I am the president of the Historical Society. I've been the president for about seven months, and I'd like to recognize Walter Jones. He was the president before me. Our directive that we were given by our membership and by other people in the community was that we needed to get a good director to replace our, our previous director. Walter and I interviewed people as far as from Miami, uh, Florida. We interviewed a lady from Dalton, and then we came back and found Emily right here in the city of Newton. I want to tell you, it won't take you long to realize that Emily is an exceptional lady. She is working on her doctorate in English with major in rhetoric. Her thesis paper was on the ladies of the Temple um, College. Uh, is that a college? Is that a name? College here in town. So she has a large background in, a great background in the history and a great desire about history of the city of Newton. I told her to be very detailed in her report. So she, I think she's got about 42 slides. Uh, that's, that's the first thing he's done wrong. <laughs> I was going to tell you, I think I corrected it when I came in and told her she could keep it under two minutes. You'd probably appreciate it. I'd like to introduce to you Kimberly. Emily. <laughs> Uh, thank you, everybody, for having me. Um, I've really enjoyed being the director of the Historical Society for the past three months, and I'm really excited about what we've been doing and what we have planned to do. Um, my slides are very thorough. I am a graduate student, so please forgive the thoroughness, but um, the plan is available for anybody who wants to go over the more in-depth written plan or the presentation. I am more than happy to send that, but I will just give the brief overview, um, and then if anybody has questions, I am more than happy to answer those. Um, so the Historical Society since 1972 has been dedicated to the preservation of history in Coweta County, Noonan, and the surrounding areas, and we are still dedicated to that. Um, since that time, there has been moments of flux throughout its history, and we are in a moment of change again, and we are very much looking forward to that moment of change. Um, I like to think it is a moment of progression um, and things that we are very excited about doing in the future. Um, who we've been in the past, and this is our mission statement, who the Historical Society has been, um, is an organization really dedicated to the preservation of history, um, collecting archives, keeping those preserved, um, keeping the artifacts of local people preserved in an archive, while the museum has really been dedicated to showcasing those archives, telling the stories of the people who live here and the surrounding areas. 
But where we want to go and what we want to become is the historical society continuing to be dedicated to that preservation, expanding whose stories we preserve, um, but also becoming more of a research center. Um, the archives are very, very rich. I have been um, blessed and I have really um, been honored to use our archives for my own type of research. I know of other people, local authors, um, other local historians who have used our archives for their research, and I uh, really want to see our facility become more of an education center, more of a research center where people can come and utilize those archives for their own research. So that is kind of a big um, who we want to be as far as the historical society, continue with that preservation, expand that preservation, but also see the education and research center kind of grow. Where we want the uh, McRitchie House Museum to expand and where we see that going is becoming more of a museum of excellence, becoming dedicated to having uh, permanent exhibits in our um, home, really seeing that vision that Edgar Hollis um, put out in his will come to life, um, have it become a community center point where people come for events, uh, where they bring their out of town guests, uh, where they come see the stories, narratives, history of Coweta <coughs> County, Noonan on display. Um, and we really tell the wonderful, rich stories of, of this town. So that's where we really see it going, um, these two places. How we get there, we've set out goals, both short-term and long-term, for the next five years. Um, we're gonna rebuild the membership program. We really see that expanding. Um, we see partnering with educators um, and education centers to build that education resources. Uh, we see looking at these procedures and policies and making sure they're really clear and in place so that we can have more people come in to our facilities. Uh, we want to be more of a community partner and sponsor and have more, um, just be more of a hub for community events, but also see partnerships with other organizations in town. Um, and eventually we see this uh, just expanding, creating reading room spaces for the Historical Society. Uh, we also see revitalizing the McRitchie Hollis Museum, refocusing it, uh, building permanent exhibits, um, increasing our revenue streams. We are really looking at the finances and seeing where we can tap in and increase, uh, diversify those revenue streams for the upcoming years. Begin docent programs, so getting in more volunteers, providing outlets for both school age children um, and re up to retirees to come in and volunteer, be part of history. Um, creating, again, more operating procedures and just really becoming a wonderful place for the community to come in and be involved. We've set out key action plans which are very detailed in the report, so if you want to see those, I'm more than happy to share those, but they're very spelled out how we're going to reach those goals in the next few years, um, and we're really excited and working towards those. A lot of those goals we've already accomplished in the last three months, so we're really excited. We are very much on our way to accomplishing these and seeing very good things happening. So we're really excited about um, where we've been in the last three months. We've um, gotten some accolades along the way. Uh, we were voted Best of Coweta for the Historic Train Depot. Um, we've gotten a lot of media, positive media mentions, which we're really excited about. Uh, we've had some wonderful <coughs> acquisitions, an RD train, uh, coal train whistle, um, some portraits of famous Noonanites and Coweitans come in. We are partnering with University of West Georgia for an archives holding project. They just started on Monday, so they are helping us go through our archives and uh, digitize our finding aids, so we're really excited about that. We've increased our museum visitors. The month of June saw 129 unique visitors, which was the most uh, visited month in museum history. So we were really excited to see that many people walk through the door. Um, we had our passport program this summer, which was really exciting, and we had a lot of fun with that. We plan to do that again next year. Um, we just launched our new exhibit, Touchdown Noonan, Tackling the Legacy of Noonan High School Football, which is a really fun exhibit. And we revitalized our back room office space into a new rotating <coughs> exhibit space. It is beautiful. It looks like a museum space, so we're well on our way uh, to getting that goal done of revitalizing the museum. Um, so that is really exciting. We had our pep rally, 
which was a lot of fun. We had the Noonan High School band out and the Noonan High School cheerleaders had a great time on the lawn. Um, and we just launched our docent training program last week. We had two volunteers show up and we are doing that monthly. So we're really excited about the interest that is involved in that. So we're really excited about the future. We've got a lot of things planned, working really hard, um, but we're, we're just really excited about what's going on and what's to come. So if you have any questions, I am more than happy to answer. Any questions of Ms. Kimball? Right. Thank you. Thank you. I think thank you, you can see why we're so proud of her. Yeah, you did <laughs> a great job. Thank, thank you. you. Any questions? Comments? We appreciate it very much. Thank and you. Look forward to your continued success. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, the next uh, item uh, on the agenda today is consider extending a contract award for concrete lift <coughs> services uh, as a resource for addressing sidewalk repair. You have this contract for you. I'll entertain a motion if there are no questions to counsel. So moved. Second. Motion is second. We uh, award the contract as presented and recommended. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. The next is uh, consider a partial release of stormwater facility ma management agreement or maintenance agreement between the Coweta County TLC LLC and the City of Noonan in Madison Park at Noonan Lakes. Uh, you have this before you. I've got, uh, I see Mr. Clark prepared this. So I've got a question, I think, of him. That, and I understand that what happened here, they subdivided the property and this, they're wanting to, to allow the new developer of whatever subdivided piece that they're not presently uh, occupying to be responsible for whatever they do in stormwater management. I think that's than, exactly right. Yeah, okay. So my question is, what is the timing of that? What if that parcel that they have subdivided and sold off just sits there and nothing happens, yet there's an erosion issue on the property? Are they continued... Mr. Sears, you're shaking your head, well, so we'll time. As I understand from an engineering perspective, is that the way that the current stormwater facility was designed for what has been developed already, that the other site that's asked to be released does not even drain into this facility. Okay. So it's, it's, it's not, my understanding is it's not receiving any stormwater from the site to be released. Okay. And that's part of the issue is in order to try and get the water over to this to be a shared facility is more difficult than them building their, their own, own stormwater facility. Now, okay. To be clear, it's really addressing water quality. Um, the development is already accounted for all stormwater uh, detention. So okay. this is just the water quality component. Okay, so there's no lapse somewhere. That that's correct. Be, that's right. Okay, good. That's my question. Okay, you've got uh, this before you. Are there any other questions or comments? If none, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Motion is second. We agree to the partial release, uh, a partial release of the stormwater facility maintenance agreement between Kelly <laughs> County TLC LLC and the city of Noonan at Madison Park at Noonan Lakes. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. The next is uh, consider approval for the Engineering Services Master Agreement for the Lower Fayetteville Road Operations and Safety Project. You have this uh, approval before you, or the agreement before you. Is there any questions of staff? Entertain them at this time. If not, entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Motion is second that we approve the agreement as presented and recommended. Any discussion or questions? All those in favor? I have one question. Yes. Um, was sure. there a cost on this? I didn't, I don't think I saw that. There's no cost for the master uh, service, the engineering services master agreement. This really just outlines the uh, framework for how we <coughs> will assign the various tasks. And the next agenda item is the first task and the money is assigned with that one. Right. So in order for us to, to issue task orders for the Lower Fayetteville Road Project, uh, we have to have a master services agreement in, in place. All right. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions, comments? I'll call a question. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. And then, as Mr. Kalar said, the next uh, is to consider approval of scope and fees for task number one, the preliminary engineering phase one, scoping for the uh, Little Fable Road operations and safety project. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. 
A motion and a second. We approve uh, as presented and recommended by, by staff. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. The next is a direction regarding the uh, possibility of renaming a portion of Waterworks Road. I put this on the agenda. Uh, this is in recognition, of course, of the Noonan Cougars. Ms. Smith, how are you? I'm well. How are y'all doing? Um, the one thing uh, Ms. Kimball didn't say a while ago when she was recognizing Noonan High School football history was that, that in October of this year, Noonan High School will uh, actually play its 1,000th uh, high school football game. So that's a pretty big deal. I don't think there are a handful of yeah. high schools in the state of Georgia who can say that they've played mm -hmm. a thousand um, football games. So, in uh, honor uh, of that, I am suggesting that we re rename just that section from the Grain Street to the entrance into Herschel Norid uh, Waterworks Park, so that there are uh, several uh, new utilities buildings down that road that don't want to go through the name change. But there are only two houses on this particular road, and I've spoken to the owner, actually happens to be the owner of both houses, um, and he is in agreement. So I would like to, to suggest we uh, name the road Cougar Trail and um, see if I can get approved from council. Ms. Smith, do you have anything else to order? You summarized it quite well. I just needed to know what was the second part of Cougar you wanted to do. Trail. Well, I'm suggesting trail, but that works. It, that's open to discussion. I kind of like the way, but I don't know how to argue. I thought that was a good one, too. Okay, well, I'm, I'm, I'm not stuck with what I like, so. <laughs> They're all available, we check. Yeah, we've, done, we've already done some legwork on this, as, as, you, as you read in the agenda. So. Does the school? No, I talked to Principal Puckett and Dr. Puckett. He didn't, okay. you know, just made sure they didn't have any addresses that were Waterworks Road and everything's on the Grain Street for them, so, okay. yeah. Really matters not to me. If you prefer way, then that's fine. <laughs> okay. I make a motion that we name it Cougar Way. Okay, that's fine. Motion to second. Any discussion? All those in favor. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Just in terms of process, we will try to probably schedule a public hearing the first meeting in September. And we'll go ahead and make notifications to the appropriate agencies and the property owner, make them aware of that, and we'll advertise that shortly. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. The next item on the agenda is uh, Noonan Housing Authority of Noonan request to, lay, to waive the pilot fees for 2019. Ms. Strozier, who uh, runs the housing authority, called me uh, a month or so ago, and, and we, had, we had done this one other time uh, in the past where we waived their pilot fees for a um, project or an issue. I'm not sure what that was. It was several years ago. But she's asking to do it again this year to waive the pilot fees so they could use that money to uh, improve uh, over on Boone Drive, I believe, the, the uh, recreation area and the area behind uh, the housing development there. So um, it would be my recommendation that we approve the request. Second. second. Motion to second. We approve the request. Any discussion? And that, that's a savings of a little over 42000 Yeah, the, right. pilot, the, the, the pilot fee is approximately 43000 right. in Jane. So right. I think what they're doing is saying that would save them enough money to yes. be able to afford this renovation. And then right. last year they saved about the same. Did we, did we? No, we wasn't last year. It was so uh, years ago. We, Mr. Sears and I found that we've done two waivers of the pilot. We did one several years back with the Hannah Holmes right. transactions and the okay. demo, et cetera. And then we did one for them uh, when they had some issues during the recession. Right. They this had, will be the third yeah. waiver. Cash flow issues. Yeah, give Thank cash you. Okay. I have a motion second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carried. Thank you. The next item is to consider three MEAG agreements to purchase excess power. Uh, you've got those agreements before you. We've done this several times. Uh, the first is the city of Cairo. Griffin is the second, and the third is East Point. Um, let me take three separate motions on this, if you don't mind. The first is for Cairo. Second. So moved. Motion. Second. Motion second. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. The next is for Griffin. So moved. Second. Motion is second. Uh, any questions? All those in favor? 
opposed? Motion carried. And the next is for East Point. So moved. Second. Motion to second. Any questions? All those in favor? Opposed? Thank you. The next uh, is consider change order number one through change order for number five for the Sprayberry Road Recreational Dog Park Project. I have this before you. Any questions of staff? Entertain a motion. Motion to second. We approve the uh, change order number one through five for Sprayberry Road uh, Recreational Dog Park Project as presented and recommended by staff. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. The next is a request for transmittal of the 2019 uh, update to the Capital Improvements Element CIE, which includes the short term work program and to the Three Rivers Commission and to the Georgia Department of Community Affairs. Cole, how are you today? I'm fine, thank you. And what good afternoon, Mr. What Mayor. To your crowd? <laughs> they disappeared. It's amazing. Okay. Um, so thanks again, Mr. Mayor and Council members, for having me today. And um, I would like to ask for transmittal of the CIE to DCA. And we'll get back any comments from Atlanta about this and update accordingly and come back to the council in September for a final vote. Okay. Thank you. Can I get a motion to uh, so allow them to transmit the update? Second. Motion to second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. The next status report. Mr. Murray, how are you, sir? Doing well. How are you, Mr. Mayor and Council? Good. Um, just two really properties that I wanted to bring uh, to your attention today uh, that have either uh, reached the resolution deadline or assume we'll be reaching that deadline. Uh, the first is 121 Pinson Street. Uh, that resolution deadline expired on the 5th of August. Um, I did send a, a letter to Mr. Beasley, who's the owner of the property, uh, uh, stating that we were going to move forward with the resolution uh, execution unless, um, unless we heard back from them within 10 days. He did call me back, and uh, I think we're kind of at a crossroads with this property. I wanted to, uh, to mention it. Um, it's been in the council a long time. Um, and the, the, the property is about 90 to 95% complete. So um, I guess my question is, have they satisfied the intent of the repair order or do we want to move forward with uh, uh, either full completion and uh, re uh, receiving a um, CO or demolition? Uh, their intent is to finish it, but there's some issues between the owner and the contractor. They're both blaming the other one for not being able to finish it, but they're very close. Um, they're about 95% complete. So um, I guess that's where we stand with it. And um, just maybe wanting some recommendation from council as how, to, how you want to proceed. Well, I mean, um, council's gonna, or at least I am gonna rely heavily on your opinion of whether or not you could give them a CO. Could you? Well, not right now, no. I mean, uh, we're, we can keep working with them and keep, keep trying to push them across the finish line. But, uh, and I feel like I have a pretty good rapport with, with the parties involved, and I think we could get to that point. It's just we're having a hard time getting them to make that last step. Uh, this is 121 Pinson, correct? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Although you're saying no progress, did I hear you say earlier they were at the 90 to 95% completion level? Yes, there was no progress in the last 30 days. Now, uh, when, once they got the letter uh, saying that we were going to move forward, that did spur some activity. They, they had a crew out there on Friday. I was out there Friday, uh, went through the house. Again, it's very close. They're just some trim work uh, and basically installing the HVAC. That's what, they, that's what they're lacking. Okay, so, so the house is secure? Yes, sir. Not it a, looks good. Not it's, a menace to the neighborhood. No, it's right. It doesn't meet any of the substandard housing issues at this point right. in time. It's, it, it's not like issues to merge. Exactly. Say, but it's not CO ready. But, but it's close and it. Yeah. Not, we need, the council, in my opinion, needs to grant whatever time we need to grant to let them work through whatever problems they've got and finish the drill. How many days do they need? Have they indicated how, many, how much longer they would need? They haven't indicated. Uh, I mean, I, my suggestion would be 60 days, but um, that's that's my suggestion. That's second. Uh, will you amend it with a 30-day report? Yes. 60. It's a 
60-day motion with a 30-day report. Does everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. With second, second. you second. okay with that? Yes. Yep. Yes. Made, yeah. Okay. Did you make either one? <laughs> okay. We've got a 60-day extension here with a 30-day report, and that's on 121 uh, Pinson Street. So, any discussion on that? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. And then did you have another on? Yes, sir. The, the last one, uh, uh, 11 Melson Street, right. uh, which is coming up the resolution deadline, August 18th. Uh, Ms. Richardson was before us uh, 60 days ago. She has sold the property. I just found out uh, Wednesday of last week. And in fact, the new, uh, con the new owner has already started. He's cleaned out uh, all the brush. He's removed a lot of debris. He's well on his way. In fact, he has agreed to come before you on the next council meeting on the 27th and discuss the time frame that he needs to uh, to complete it. And he's talking about six weeks. So he's I think he's pretty aggressive and wants to get this done. So I think that will be a tremendous help to that community, to the church that's right next door. And uh, So this one's looking promising right now. So it expires before our next meeting, though. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So if you're thinking uh, another 60-day extension would allow him just to continue to work and not waste his time coming to us for ask, to ask that would be that? would be fine with me. Okay. So moved. Okay. Ma'am? Will he still come to the next meeting for his report? With the report. Because no. you're saying he's going to need about six weeks, you think? Well, that's what he's telling me, but that's not, you know, that hasn't been confirmed. He has, he has to turn in a, a scope of work. And barring anything unforeseen, that's what his plans are. But so he can still come to the next meeting if y'all need him here. So he's planning on it. Okay, but I had a motion for a 60, 60 day extension. Day. Is there a second? Second. Motion a second for 60 day extension on uh, Love and Melson. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Is that all we have today? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next <coughs> item under visitors is a request from Lunar Chapter 483, uh, order of the Eastern Star to conduct the 33rd annual Martin Luther King Jr. Parade in Noonan on Saturday, January the 11th, 2020, beginning at noon, the same route in previous years. Is there a motion? Second. It's a second. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. The next is a request from Watercrest Senior Living Group Assisted Living Community, which is opening soon in noon to consider change in ordinance that will allow them to serve alcohol in their restaurant and bistro without meeting the requirement to be open to the public. How are you today? Hello. Hello. Thank you for allowing me to present our request today. My name is Lisa Cawthon. I'm the Executive Director for Watercrest Senior Living. We are building at the corner of Lower Fayetteville and Summerlin Boulevard. We're hoping to be done with construction by the end of the month. Senior living has evolved over the last couple of years, and what we are hoping is that we can offer our seniors the same amenities and quality of life that they have in their homes currently, things that we all enjoy in our neighborhoods, the swimming pools, spas, hair salons, um, all in-house. Um, we do have an unusual request of we will have a bistro in addition to our dining service. We will be governed by the Department of Public Health. We will have an executive chef who is uh, Serve Safe certified. In our bistro area, we would like to serve specialty coffees, breads, panini, charcuterie type items. We would also like to be able to serve beer and wine to our residents and their visitors and families. Um, we will have a point of sale system. We will keep track of food and beverage as opposed to beer and wine. We do plan on more than 55% of our sale being food in that area. We only plan to do this from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Um, during the day. Um, and that is our request. Um, and again, I appreciate you at least um, taking the time to let us present that request. Thank you very much for being You're very here. You're welcome. Mr. Sears, obviously we will have to amend our ordinance, alcohol ordinance, to make yes. this happen. We have objection from council to instruct Mr. Sears to craft that change and bring it back to us for adoption. So that this will be for all, any senior living, correct? Or is it specifically to well, it would be any senior living that is able to meet the requirements of the order, okay. which would very, I guess, would very much track what she is saying. Right. So, okay. Would would this open it up to any other organizations then? No, we can we can craft it that it would to to. I'm 
whatever you call it, senior living. We'll, we can work on it, at least with Tracy and Dean, as to the appropriate language. Uh, it, it would be in the nature of a semi-private club. We do have a uh, provision in the ordinance for private clubs. This becomes somewhat semi-private because these are not members, uh, they're actually residents. And the, and the bistro and the, the dining facilities are not completely closed uh, as to members because they do have guests uh, and invitees uh, you know, of the residents who come to the location. So, go ahead. And, and we've also had a couple of requests, um, and primarily from what? Lillian uh, Gardens. Lillian Gardens. Lillian Gardens. Uh, she is now doing all of her own on-site food prep. Uh, and so she wants to be able to uh, serve alcoholic beverages also without the event side uh, that, um, you know, that somebody has to come in and a catering give a, a catering giveaway to alcohol. Uh, so we will be crafting something along those lines too because it's going to be very similar to what we're talking about for the assistance All right. as you if know, there's no objection, if objection if there's no objection and, yeah. and we'll, of course as you also know we're working on this arts and entertainment which is going to permit um, uh, certain people to get permits during certain events we're expanding the event side to get permits uh, to have alcohol at certain events that are not necessarily offered by the city, all right, in, in, in the line of using caterers and, um, you know, other licensed establishments that we already have that pain. So we'll, we can kind of craft all that together and give you three pieces uh, for your consideration, you know, not all together, but to take you to do. I think that comes back to us next month. Uh, Yes, we can probably. Mm -hmm. not, at our, not at our next meeting. Not, not <laughs> the next meeting, and, and maybe it'd be for the last meeting in September. Okay. Thank you. Motion to instruct Mr. Sears to be crafty. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I <laughs> if you want to, if you want to put that motion together, considering all three of those issues. Yes, all of those issues that uh, <laughs> we discussed. Uh, Watercrest, uh, Lillian Gardens. And Okay. Is there a second? Second. <laughs> Motion and a second. I'm not going to repeat the <laughs> All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. All right. Thank you. The next item on the agenda today, uh, thank you for being here. We appreciate your attention to it. Uh, request from Frankie Harden, one roof, to consider approval to sign a document to accompany the application for, to DCA for emergency solution grants. Uh, program uh, ESG. How are you today? I'm good. Thank you. You have this request before you from Ms. Harden, and I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. So there's a motion and a second to approve the signature of the document uh, for her application. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, and the next item is a request from Frankie Henderson, Cowardy Schools, to hold their annual Student Vet Connect 5K November the 9th, 2019, <coughs> from 7 uh, to 10 a.m. is the same route, uh, same day as the Veterans Parade. So, so moved. moved. Second. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, Max Kitchens was on the agenda. I do not see Mr. Kitchens here today. I understand this has been withdrawn. So that ends our regular agenda. Anything else from anybody else in attendance today that needs to come forward? Seeing no one come forward, I'll go around the table, Mr. Devine. No, sir. I have nothing. I do. Um, a few weeks, uh, actually more than a few weeks ago at this point, I uh, passed out to you guys, um, gentlemen, a copy of the Kirkland, Washington Cottage Ordinance. And I wanted to see if staff has had a chance to look at that, if you guys have had a chance to look at it, to um, warrant looking at it and crafting something that makes sense for women. I don't know if I was here for that. I have a copy on my desk. I have to admit, I have not. 
Okay, well, I don't want it to drop. So yeah, we, we've done this, that staff has discussed it. We reviewed it. We're just waiting for some conversation. So I, I do have a copy on my desk if everybody wants a copy. Okay. All right. Oh, no, thank you. Mr. No, sir. All right. Uh, we do have a need this afternoon for an executive session to discuss real estate. If uh, Mayor Pro Tem Jenkins will take us into that, please. I move that we now enter into closed session as allowed by official code of Georgia 50 4 and pursuant to advice by the city attorney for the purpose of discussing real estate, and that we in open session adopt a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor or presiding officer to execute an affidavit in compliance with official code of Georgia 50 14 4, and that this body ratifies the actions of the council taken in closed session and confirm that the subject matters of the closed session were, with an exception, permitted by the open meetings law. Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Approved? Or passed? Motion carried. Thank you. We're in executive session. I know.